With our off-grid barn dominium project wrapping up and a newly finished workshop, we were eager to jump into our first big fabrication project of the year. A few crazy ideas later, and we're attempting to mount a massive eight foot wide industrial grade snowblower on the front of our M1078 army truck, powered by a Pontiac Sunfire. So what do you think? Can we pull off building the ultimate snowblower? All right, guys, here we go. We're about to blow snow with our homemade snowblower for the first time. Courtney looks really nervous at me. I have no idea if she, oh, she's waving me on. Here we go. This is what Courtney does to get the shots. Oh, it's like camera infinity. <laughs> You're filming me filming you. Welcome back to part four of a series where Courtney and I are turning this M1078 into the ultimate snow removal tool. And in the last episode, you saw us get the engine fired up and spin the blower for the first time. And if everything goes according to plan, by the end of this episode, we're gonna be blowing some snow. I'm excited, so let's get started. I guess it fits. The next step is to figure out how to physically attach this blower to this truck. So I picked up these tractor three point repair pieces that fit these pins perfectly and all we have to do is fabricate a mount that puts these somewhere about right here on this truck. All we have to do. All we have to do. Step one, let's make sure these fit. This goes in. Sweet. That's a good sign. The good news is they're the right part. Trying out something new in the shop today. Shout out to my buddy Chris for the idea, but basically it's tape a filter to the front of a box fan to help pull some of the smoke and soot out of the air. And I think it's totally working. Normally I'd be working with the door open and some nice airflow, but with the cold temperatures out, I don't feel like doing that. So filter on a box fan, quick, easy, cheap way to help reduce some of the smoke in the shop. All right, I've got these two upright pieces now bolted into the factory toe point locations on the truck. And then we have these three point mounts that look like they're in the perfect spot for mounting to the blower. Next step is gonna to be to build some supports that come back this direction, tie into the frame up underneath the truck to make sure that these are nice and strong. Put a cross member between this, and then we're gonna be ready to mount this blower to the truck. Another part down. Yeah. 
So I just timed that and it took me six minutes, six minutes to go from an idea in my head to a finished part ready to weld on. That plasma table is pretty darn impressive. Well, pretty much as soon as I finished this thing last night, I turned around and looked at it and realized that I had made a huge mistake. In order to service anything on this truck, you have to be able to tilt the cab forward. And with the way that I built this mount, there's no way to tilt the cab. And I don't wanna to have to take the blower off and the mount off just to do maintenance on this truck. So one step forward, two steps back, I'm gonna to have to redo some of this. Little by little, piece by piece, I take back what's been stolen from me. Little by little, piece by piece, until I'm complete. Before I get much further on this mount, I'd like to get the blower actually attached to the mount and on the truck so I can see how the truck's gonna react to the weight and better visualize the lift mechanism that's gonna lift the blower up and down. Oh, too close. <laughs> Dang it. I don't know a way to push it away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The blower is on the truck. We've gotten a lot of questions in the comments about whether or not this truck is gonna be able to handle the weight of the blower. Well, this is what it's gonna be like when it's blowing. The majority of the weight of the blower is actually sitting on the ground. The truck's just carrying a small bit of the weight and pushing the blower along. But when we're not blowing, just like a plow, the, we're gonna have a mechanism that lifts the blower up off the ground, and that's when all of the weight of the blower is gonna be transferred on the truck. So we're gonna mock that situation up and see what happens. Oh, it's lifting the floor. Everything clears. I think that's pretty close to the up position. It doesn't, I mean, it just has to go up enough to like clear the ground. Ish. Ish. And it's not like we're going to drive the to town with this on. What? Maybe. Riley can speak for himself on that one. I have every intention of going to town to get ice cream in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> the ice cream in the winter? Yeah. Okay, wow. It looks really cool. So now we're going to find out what the truck looks like with all of the weight of the blower hanging off the front of it. Oh my goodness. Okay, the chain is taut. The mount has not broken off yet. Well, that's good. The truck is definitely squatting. That is the full weight of the blower hanging on the front of the truck. Nope, we've still got another two and a half inches of suspension travel in the front. I think the realization just hit me of like how big all of this is. So now that we know that it's going to work in the up position, it's time to figure out the length of the hydraulic ram we need to do the actual lift. The plan is to run a hydraulic ram from this cross member down to somewhere around right here. That's gonna raise and lower the blower Collapsed length measurement, now we need to find like a neutral length measurement, and then we also need to account for the fact that if we crest a hill, the blower needs to go down, and so we're gonna need extra extension of the ram even beyond the down position. So with the lift cylinder mounted, the next step is gonna to be to figure out the hydraulic control system that's gonna raise and lower the blower and also tilt the chute. I've never done any kind of hydraulic controls like this, so it's been fun to learn something new and hopefully all the research I did paid off and I actually ended up with the right control system parts. So basically what happens is that this manifold right here is gonna have a couple of solenoids on it that are electronically controlled that help direct the flow of hydraulics. 
And one of the pieces to this puzzle that was a little bit hard for me to figure out was the float function because when we're driving along, we need this blower to stay on the ground and follow the contour of the ground. So we need that cylinder to go into a mode where it basically is allowed to freely move up and down. And that's what this extra solenoid on the side here is gonna do. When that's energized, that's gonna allow the fluid to freely flow back from the ram to the reservoir. And I guess another important question is, where is the hydraulic fluid gonna come from? So we want this blower to be completely self-contained, which means that we don't really wanna pass hydraulic hoses from the truck to the blower. Instead, the only connections I want to the truck are a couple of wires to control the electronics. So I'm gonna be using the power steering pump off of this 2.2 Ecotech to drive all of these hydraulics. This pump is capable of producing about 1300 PSI, which should be plenty for powering this lift solenoid and the chute rotation. So with that, let's mount a hydraulic manifold and get some hoses figured out. Ran out of welding gas, bummer. So what I'm building now is a hydraulic reservoir that's gonna help expand the capacity of the existing hydraulic reservoir on the pump to make room for the additional fluid from that hydraulic cylinder that we added. I'm TIG welding it because I think it's gonna give me a better chance of not having leaks. So I'm gonna run to town, I'm gonna get more welding gas, I'm gonna get two fittings that I forgot to buy, and hopefully by this evening we'll be testing the hydraulics. Kind of a lot of work to make a custom little tank and now I just hope that it works. With the hydraulic lines all hooked up and the manifold block mounted, the only thing left to do before we can test the up-down function of this is to wire it all up and put some fluid in it. So we're getting really close. I'm gonna be using this multi-function relay control board where basically I have this controller that has eight buttons that I can either program to be momentary or continuous. Each one of the buttons on this then corresponds to a relay on the control board. And uh, so I only have one wire, this one thin wire leading up to the cap, and I'll be able to control eight different functions. Okay, you guys, I was upstairs editing and Riley just called me to say that I needed to come down because it's time to test this thing. Oh my goodness, let's see what he's been up to. Oh my goodness. I think it's gonna go up and down. That looks very complicated. <laughs> okay, step one is just to fire it up and try to get the air out of the hydraulics. The controller lit up. Okay, I'm gonna start it. Okay. Oh, it's immediately empty. Do you wanna press a button? Let's use one of these two. Yeah? Whoa! It worked! It's working! That is so cool. The good news is that this hydraulic system is definitely going to work. I'm hungry and it's time for dinner, so I'm gonna call it a night and we'll see you tomorrow. That's it, that's all the way.
Oh my goodness, you guys, it works. It works. Oh my gosh. It goes up, it goes down, it goes left, it goes right. It floats. Which means our list of to-dos before we can blow snow at this thing is getting really short. All right, belts are on. We are so close to testing this thing for the first time, but there's one last thing that we need to do. Last winter, we learned that this truck does not do very well in the snow. So this winter we had some custom chains made for it and hopefully they fit the tires. These chains are huge. They look way, way long. These chains are supposed to be for this size tire and I have no idea what happened, but luckily too long is better than too short and all we have to do is cut them. There, so we're gonna cut this link here. Nope. Do you remember last winter when we had never even put chains on a car before? <laughs> Sweet. One down, three to go. It feels incredibly surreal, but I think it's time to test this thing. We've been working towards this moment for weeks, maybe even months, and I have no idea what's about to happen, but I hope it works. I just hope that nothing really, really bad happens. <laughs> We're gonna head down to our old road. We haven't plowed it at all this winter, so it should be a good test of what this thing can do. Hopefully the snow is not too frozen and hard. This is your emergency key in case you need to shut it down. And this is my key. Okay. This is gonna be an interesting test because this snow is really hard packed snow. It's not wet though, so I think it's still gonna blow. Here we go. All right, guys, here we go. We're about to blow snow with our homemade snowblower for the first time. Courtney looks really nervous at me. I have no idea if she, oh, she's waving me on. Here we go. Truck can drive, parking brake off. Driving the truck forward a little bit. Here we go, going down and going forward. And we're blowing snow.
The good news is that it totally works. <laughs> and it like, it launches the snow. It's it's super cool. I hope that the camera picked up how cool that was. I'm so excited. Like this is good. This gave me the motivation I needed to finish all the little loose ends and actually make this thing a functional snowblower. We really need the cruise control so that it can throttle up and down as it takes in more snow. And I cannot wait to see what happens once we've got that set up. That's the good news. But now the bad news is that I got the truck super, super stuck trying to turn it around. This is our old road and it is pretty darn bad. And so we kind of knew that there was a risk of this happening today, but I still think it's worth it just to have tested the blower. That was a lot of fun. We're gonna get the excavator, get this truck unstuck. So thanks for watching and we'll, we'll see, see you next time. time.